Kosher, let's start this segment slowly today with this peaceful protest of lefties losing it. Here are a group of vegans staging a mock funeral in a supermarket and they place flowers on meat trays. Mm. Okay, Kosha, at least uh, they're not uh, super gluing themselves to the refrigerators. So, you know, peaceful protests like that, I, I can't be too upset about it. But what we can be upset about is these neo pronouns that are taking hold. And you've heard about they, them pronouns. That's passe, that's 2020. We're now in the era of void self pronouns. Have a look. He, as you would refer to me as he, because that's also one of my pronouns. Have you seen Void? Void is on Void's way. Okay, I think we're all a bit dumber for having watched that. Can you keep up with these new pronouns? Because we mock them here, but you are expected to respect them and observe them, and it's hateful not to, but they can literally be anything. It can be plant, it can be void in that case, it can be fairy self. I mean, yeah. at what point will there be some limits on completely mangling the English language? I think only when the culture pushes back. Until then, we're not going to have any limits. And you're right, it can change in real time. So you're expected to have a, a rule book or a, a language book, and then it changes, and you don't even know that you're violating what the latest warm it, uh, uh, norm is. I didn't play you that whole video, but that is someone who's trying to explain the importance of this pronoun and why you should use it. They were having trouble themselves actually using it and providing examples because it, it, it's just unnatural. This is not how language works. Now, let's go to Charlie Kirk and T Turning Point USA. They do some great work. Here they expose American students paying, well, small fortunes for college degrees but who are so daft or perhaps cowardly that they cannot answer simple questions like, what is a woman? What is a woman? What is a, that's a stupid question, dude. That's a dumb question. What is a woman? It's not a trick question. What is a woman? You can't answer the question with the question. Yeah, define the woman without saying woman. You're in college paying for an education. What is a woman? How about you talk to someone with media training? Huh? How about you talk to someone? You don't need media training. It's not a trick. Well, what is a woman? <laughs> you can't answer the question with the. It's the college kids of America going hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt who think it's a trick question when you ask them what a woman is. They don't seem to understand that saying the answer, someone who identifies as a woman isn't an answer because, again, what is a woman? You say someone who identifies as a woman, you still haven't answered the question, what is that? So, again, how can they be so clueless and so unequipped to deal with the most basic questions? Because this question of what is a woman has now been going around for some time. You'd think they'd come up with a better answer than someone who identifies as a woman. I think it's the echo chamber world that we live in. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those kids really never ever talk to anybody outside of that echo chamber. This Charlie Kirk interaction mm. might be the first time. So you go all through <laughs> your school years, your entire family, the professors in the classroom, everybody in the job market that you talk to, they all speak that, that same language yeah. that you can identify. This was probably maybe the first time that student heard this question. And Charlie Kirk was also faced with students calling him a fascist, but do they know what a fascist is? I know he's not a fascist, but it's more just of getting the community together to just um, go so against him. A lot of people said he's not actually a fascist, so then why call him a fascist? Well, I don't know the exact definition of a fascist, so I don't know if he is or isn't a fascist. <laughs> Oh, it's almost amusing. In the space of a few seconds, she goes from calling him a fascist to saying, well, he's not a fascist, and then she admits that she actually doesn't know what the word means. She was kind of sweet 
actually. Kind of in her, yeah, in her sometimes stupidity <laughs> can be cute. It can be, and I, maybe this is why the federal government wants to um, do the loan forgiveness thing, because they're not learning anything in college, so may as well get a refund. Well, if you want to know what a fascist is, I don't know, maybe have a look at your mates there or perhaps in the mirror, because fascists love shutting down their opponents. They love shutting down free speech and uh, silencing people with uh, intimidation and violence. Now let's go to some lefties losing it. Here are folks who seem to comprehend that 12-year-olds shouldn't be able to get tattoos. Not a good idea. But when asked about medical interventions like puberty blockers, well, this is what they say. Do you think a 12-year-old should be able to get a tattoo? No. No. It's a pretty permanent decision. They can't make the decision for themselves yet. It's something permanent on their body. Do you think a 12-year-old should be able to consent to puberty blockers? Yes. Yes. And I understand how that sounds really hypocritical. Yes, it's a permanent change on their body, but I think that at that point in their life, they probably know who they are, who they want to be. And you think so at 12 years old? Uh, yes. Uh, explain that one to me, Kosha. Tattoos, bad, but transitioning, going down the road of irreversible treatments, fine. I think it's a couple of things. So one is we can see in real time what happens when people's opinions are assigned to them, back to that echo chamber, that they've been mm. assigned an opinion about tattoos, they've been assigned an opinion about puberty blockers, and they just spout out that opinion. I do think there's a second part to too, and this is uh, an indictment to the medical establishment, that there are a lot of people who actually believe those things are reversible. They mm. actually do think that they might think that a tattoo is more permanent than uh, puberty blockers and other hormonal interventions, and um, that's not the case. And I think yeah. the, the counter medical establishment has to really speak out against that because I think a lot of people are misinformed um, in how they truly think about this issue. Absolutely, and they also think it's harmless. They think something like puberty blockers isn't just reversible, but it, it has no side effects, there's no consequences to even. Uh, going down this path of medical transition. Now, let's go to lefties losing it on school boards. And this based mother in the US has given her school board a dose of reality and told them to focus on their core responsibilities. And that ain't indoctrinating children to be woke simpletons. There is one goal for the educational system. It should be to prepare children to enter careers to be productive members of society. It is not a counseling session. It is not a self-help area. It is not somewhere to find yourself. And we should not be led by the children, for goodness sake. The children are called dependents for a reason. They depend on us who have fully developed brains. You cannot feel your way through life. That is just brilliant. Uh, she speaks for so many parents. She articulated that so well. It seems to all be about the kids setting the agenda, all about emotion, and very little about actually equipping them, equipping them with to deal with the real world. Mm -hmm. I think moms and, and parents, moms and dads, is the sleeping giant that's being awakened in this. And it's one of the few areas where actually I do see people who are traditionally from the left or the right converging, because when it comes to the kids and going too far in terms of how the classrooms are being run, they are uniting a little bit. And you see that, whether it's a Glenn Youngkin election mm. on that issue, whether it's the, the, the level of people that are not running for local school board elections, which is not something that they did, or you see clips like this, um, maybe not enough, but I, I do think the tide is turning a little bit on parent rights. And you are also seeing that convergence when it comes to different ethnic groups. Uh, again, a lot of the uh, uh, groups who have traditionally supported leftist parties are now protesting against some of these leftist positions. You're seeing the Muslim parents, for example. A lot of socially conservative migrant groups are not comfortable with this sort of stuff in the classroom anywhere near their children. And finally, let's go to an elementary school teacher in the US who makes an excellent case for homeschooling. She now identifies as non-binary, mix K, MXK, that's uh, what she wants people to call her. And she's thrilled about inflicting such consequences on her young and no doubt confused students. Hi, here's some things my students have said slash done since I came out and changed my teacher name. You have a new name? Well, yes, it's a name that makes me a lot happier and that's why I changed it. I like your new name. I do too, but it's nice to know I have your approval. Mix? You mean like mixing you up like cookie dough? If that's gonna help you remember it, yeah, cookie dough works. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss K, I need... It's Mix K! I did not ask them to do that. 
guys are big brains, so I feel like I can tell you this a little bit more. Um, my new name is going to be Mix K, and I go by they and she pronouns. Fifth graders, really. I mean, you do feel sorry for the parents of whoever <laughs> is in her class because what do you do? You can't, I made a joke about, you know, it's an ad for homeschooling, but it's just not an option for many parents. You can't really, most schools dictate that you don't want your child to be in a particular class and you've just got to have to, I don't know, deprogram the children at the end of the day. That's the other option. Now, homeschooling, the rate of homeschooling has doubled in the last five years, and there is a reason for that. And some of it is COVID's afterhang, some of it is economics, and a, a large part of it is that, the culture wars. And you might see that continue more and more. And you're right, otherwise it is deprogramming and just kind of really teaching your, your kids to have a filter. Um, mm. And then you just add to that the cost in terms of money and time that we all incur for schooling, mm. and then you know, it feels counterproductive, but that's where we This are. is why school choice matters. Koshigata, thank you so much for your time thank today. You.